This is KGW News at Noon. And we begin with the breaking news out of France. I know you've been watching this and it is heartbreaking. This massive fire has burned through the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, sending up a plume of smoke that you can see across much of the city. A spokesman says the entire frame of that building is burning. We saw video of the spire collapsing and witnesses say the roof has also collapsed. Right now, we want to give you a live picture from Paris. Some of the flames have died down, but firefighters have been pouring water on the cathedral. It was under renovation, and you can still see scaffolding all around it. Notre Dame, of course, is one of the city's most popular destinations. There were lots of tourists inside, but as far as we know, everybody made it out. There are no reports yet of any injuries. Construction on this building started more than 850 years ago in 1163. French President Manuel, Manuel rather, Macron is on the scene today. And President Trump tweeted how horrible it was to watch this cathedral burn. No word yet how the fire started. Local media, though, is reporting that authorities are treating this as an accident. So keep it tuned to KGW and KGW.com. We will update you just as soon as we learn anything more. Okay, back here in the Pacific Northwest this afternoon, we are about to hear from the Cowlitz County Sheriff's Office about the loss of one of their own. Justin DeRozier was shot to death Saturday responding to a call. He was a deputy and a husband and a father. So the press conference is set to begin momentarily. You see all the media microphones there set up outside the sheriff's office. As soon as someone comes to the podium and we are expecting the sheriff to start us off, we will carry that live. Right now we want to check in with KGW's Tim Gordon. He is outside there monitoring the situation. Tim, what else do we know? Well, Brenda, we know that Deputy DeRozier was just 29 years old when he was killed in the line of duty and that the man authorities suspect of killing him was shot and killed by officers yesterday as they tried to arrest him. We're going to show you Deputy DeRozier here. He was with the sheriff's office here in Cowlitz County since 2016. DeRozier went on a call for a motorhome blocking a road just outside Kalama around 930 Saturday night. That is where a suspect shot DeRozier. He was flown to Vancouver for treatment but died in surgery. While this awful news sunk in, a manhunt was on for the suspect. That manhunt ended last night off Spencer Creek Road in Kalama. Two police officers found the suspect, and we're going to get you to the news conference. And here's uh, Sheriff Brad Thurston. Enforcement community is overwhelming. Heard from citizens, law enforcement, and elected officials from across the country express, expressing their condolences. Well, this is not a joyous moment. I'm happy to let the Catholic community know that we believe those who committed and helped cover up the murder of Deputy Justin DeRozier have been found, though the investigation is ongoing. We greatly appreciate the Clark Major Crimes team, as well as the SWAT teams for their dedication and resolve in bringing this to a resolution. It's a big relief for us all last night when uh, we saw a lot of the vehicles leaving the command post, heading home. It had been a long, uh, about a uh, <clears throat> over a 36 hour process and we're just glad they were able to let the community know that uh, the danger is over and people are going to be brought to justice for this. There's an expectation of society and like society for law enforcement professionals to act professionally, swiftly and most importantly, appropriately. The brave men of the Kelso Police Department did that last night when they were involved in this operation. This was not the result we wanted to see with a suspect. During any investigation, the goal is to bring justice to victims and those who love them using a fair and balanced legal system. Not only have we been robbed of an exceptional father, husband, son, and deputy, Justin DeRozier, we've been robbed of finding answers of why from the suspect. We are indebted to our community and law enforcement partners who have and continue to support us through this extremely difficult time. Uh, as of right now, uh, service preparations are being made. We do not have a date or time yet, but when that becomes available, we'll certainly uh, let you know. We're in the process of uh, taking care of our staff, uh, people from other agencies uh, like 911, fire department, uh, giving them uh, support and uh, uh, resources for counseling at this difficult time and a chance to get together and talk through the pain that we're all feeling. 
Uh, I also want to encourage those in the community who are having issues or struggling with this to reach out to loved ones or contact the Calvitz County Chaplaincy. Uh, they're willing and able and well trained to address any issues and concerns that uh, citizens have who are dealing with uh, the grief and loss over what's occurred in our community over the last uh, two days. So I appreciate you all coming and uh, next up we have a representative of the Behind the Badge Foundation. Good afternoon, thank you. My name is Brian Johnston. I'm a sergeant with the Monroe Police Department. I also lead an organization called Behind the Badge Foundation. One of the things that we do is we host a large number of specialized individuals during a line of duty death who respond to agencies at the agency's request in order to help out the agency in completing a honors driven memorial at the family's direction. Our job is to, starts right away to help in planning this memorial that, uh, that could be in the next 10 days. Um, we will also support the family during this tragic time as well as the agency and the community. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Andrew Hamilton. I'm the chief of the Kelso Police Department. I'm here to talk to you about the Kelso Police Department's response to this. As we both know, yesterday about 7.05 p.m., two officers from the Kelso Police Department responded to a suspicious subject call. While at that call, they, met, they were met with an armed combatant. Shots were fired, and the subject was later pronounced dead. The Kelso officers involved were Sergeant Rich Fletcher and Detective Tim Gower. Sergeant Fletcher is a 24-year-old or 24-year veteran of the Kelso Police Department. He is assigned as a patrol sergeant and is also the team leader for our local SWAT team. Detective Gower is assigned to the detective division. He was working overtime patrol to help cover for the county on this day, and he's also a 24-year veteran of the Kelso Police Department. We're very proud of the tense situation these officers had to deal with and the professionalism they showed. As with all officer involved shooting, both officers are currently on paid administrative leave during the investigation of the case. The investigation is being completed by the Clark County Major Crimes Team, Regional Crimes Team. And I would also like to thank uh, all the outpouring of support that we've gotten from all our law enforcement partners and the community here in Southwest Washington. I'm gonna turn it over to Major Krebs. Hi, I'm Sergeant Brett Waddell of the Clark County Sheriff's Office. I'll speak briefly about the investigation. It's a very fluid investigation. Uh, multiple detectives, multiple agencies uh, that are looking into it. The Clark County Regional Major Crimes Team is investigating not only the homicide of Justin, but also the officer involved shooting. So right now, there's two people that have been taken into custody in this matter so far. Uh, one is uh, Matthew Veach. He was booked for rendering criminal assistance in the first degree. And then Michael Veach was actually taken into custody on a Department of Corrections warrant unrelated to this investigation. Most of the players at this point in time have been identified and the investigation continues into their involvement. That's all I have right now. Can you say who is the main suspect? Who is the person shot? Uh, the person has not been officially identified yet. The coroner's office hasn't made the official identification. Sergeant, could you come closer to the mic? Sure. Again. Could, could, you, could you describe the relationship between the, the two in custody, uh, the suspect who was shot? Uh, again, this is part of the investigation and uh, can't go into the minute details right now because they're, they're still unfolding, they're still putting it together. It's actually very early in the investigative phase. Uh, I know it seems like it's kind of towards the end as, as far as we all look at it, but in the investigation phase, we're still very early in the investigation. Sergeant, what led you to the suspects? Proximity and investigation. You know, the, the current investigation, it was a, uh, the investigation was occurring at the time. But what made you think they're connected? Uh, again, that's part of the investigation. It, it's ongoing, so. All right. 
together anything as far as what happened when the deputy was shot? We know he was going to a motorhome call, but was the bad guy in the motorhome? I, uh, we can't, we're not completely sure at this point in time. Again, there's a lot of unknowns. So. Yes. Uh, at this time, I'm not. Uh, I don't know that, but he was he was picked up for questioning in, on this. So. Okay. Okay. We're, that's we're all I have. We're gonna have the sergeant step away. Like I said before we started, there's this is an active investigation, and we're trying to get as much information out to you as possible. I'm gonna bring the sheriff back up here at this time if you have any questions for him. And you have been listening to a live press conference outside the Cowlitz County Sheriff's Office talking about Deputy DeRosier. They touched on this, but he really does have deep roots in that community. He was a Kelso native, a Washington State graduate, and a new father. A minute ago, you saw the pictures of him with his baby girl. KGW's Christine Pitawanich is joining our coverage now. And Christine, there's a memorial outside the Sheriff's Office. And Brenda, that memorial growing, you can see one bouquet at a time. People have left a whole bunch of flowers, a candle, a heartfelt note. We've seen a number of people doing it today. Online, various agencies across the area from Portland to Vancouver to Kelso, Clark County, all sending condolences and expressing support for their fellow law enforcement officers in Cowlitz County. Deputy Justin DeRosier, DeRosier known for his love of the job and presence in a room. Today, people showed up with flowers. One of them, Mike Catrain, is an officer from Ferndale, Washington. That's up near the Canadian border. He was in the area visiting some family, but he says in his more than 17 years of service, this happens far too often. It's a loss of a brother. Um, so it's tough. Justin left a, a beautiful wife and daughter, five-month-old Lily, who's always going to know um, what an incredible man her father was. So last night, a vigil was also held. And meantime, today, right next door to the sheriff's office, planning is underway for Deputy DeRosier's memorial. Back out here live, the flags here have also been lowered to half staff today. A sad day for Cowlitz County. In its 165 years or so of existence in terms of the sheriff's office, the sheriff says this is the first deputy lost in the line of duty. And as for the flowers that are here, we spoke with the florist in the area who says he knows more flowers are on the way. So the community really coming together in a big way. Brenda. Thank you, Christine. Of course, we will bring you any new details on this officer involved shooting, both on air and online. You can go to the KGW News app or KGW.com.